have gathered here to praise God and be witnesses to love as we celebrate the life of Robert Allen Malkin, Bob. We come together in grief, acknowledging our loss. May God grant us grace that in pain we may find comfort, in sorrow, hope. Will you join me in an attitude of prayer? O oh God who gave us birth, you are ever more ready to hear than we are to pray. You know our needs even before we ask. Give to us now your comfort and your grace. That as we shrink before the mystery of death, we may see the light of eternity. Speak to us once more your message of life and of death. And help us to live as those who are prepared to die. And when our days here are accomplished, enable us to die as those who go forth to live. So that living or dying, our life may be in you. And that nothing in life or in death will be able to separate us from your deep, unconditional love. Amen. <laughs> There's some words of inspiration that anchor us. Um, one of those kind of readings for me comes from the Psalms in the, in the Old Testament. Uh, at the time uh, my own father died, I was not a Bible reader or even particularly religious. Uh, but an older man who mentored me as a kid um, said, check out the Psalms, because in the Psalms there is authenticity, there's realness, there's every thought that's ever, a human's ever thought, or a feeling that a human has ever felt. So, because I respected him, I checked it out, and uh, during that time of grieving for me, it did give me great comfort. Um, and so here, these many years later, I, I bring a psalm that most of you uh, have heard before, uh, but you won't have heard it in the same way that you'll hear it today as you remember and celebrate Bob's life. Psalm 23, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures, he leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely... Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. I want to recollect just a few things about Bob. And there's going to be a portion, and perhaps I have a few words of hope, too. Um, and then, after I speak, uh, I'll invite you to speak, too. Now, um, that doesn't mean anyone has to say anything, because a lot of the stories will unfold at the house or in the parking lot, as they already have the connections. Uh, but if there's something that you want to say about Bob, some little memory uh, of him, of a time with him, uh, I'm gonna invite you to share those memories and, uh, and si silence is all right too. Um, you gotta say this, um, he was a trucker. Right, he loved the road, the black ribbons. And, uh, you know, obviously 
and you enjoy the black ribbons as I do on the motorcycle that's in the, in the brochure too. Just time on the road, quiet. <coughs> uh, the time that most people spend on the road, especially if they're driving by themselves, uh, is, is a great time of peace, of solace, of being able to think about things. Uh, so he had the road, uh, and I particularly enjoyed this. Uh, you know, Lisa shared this with me, and I got a chuckle then, and uh, I s smile now as I uh, recollect it for you. God was a very giving, very generous man. But <coughs> Lisa said, he was generous, but he always expected something in return. So it was uh, a give and take. Uh, he enjoyed life, and he particularly enjoyed uh, uh, parties like uh, Christmas parties, like uh, Super Bowl parties. And so perhaps on February 12th of this year, uh, as you enjoy gathering together or watching the Super Bowl, you'll remember Bob. One thing that I noticed, and I, I love that this is a part of us because life you know, just continues to spring forth and fade, and uh, love exists, and it still exists. Uh, he's died, but our relationship with him has not died, nor ever will, for as long as we're alive, as long as we remember. And so I'm particularly heartened uh, for the children that are here, the babies, uh, Looks like a, a little one to me, uh, and the rest of the children, because they remind us that our lives and what we have to offer and what we have to give, our generosity in our lives, the ups and the downs, uh, are all part of us, us collectively, and we hand that sort of those sorts of experiences down to the kids and the grandkids. And for that, we can be thankful. I uh, believe, and uh, many do, that um, love is certainly here and now, uh, but love, the kind of love that really embraces each of us and all of us, and Bob, is the kind of love that's sticky and it's the kind of sticky love that never really lets us go. It, it, it holds us, it, it embraces us in difficult times, in difficult days. Uh, it's with us, it's within us, and it's among us. And it really uh, is such a wonderful thing in times of grief and loss uh, to carry uh, forward into tomorrow until the end of our days. And so on this day, we come to honor, to respect, to celebrate, to remember, to love and celebrate Bob. And for that, we come together as grateful people, grateful, thankful to have had him in our lives. And his continued influence uh, as our days grow along <coughs> as well. For that kind of love, for that kind of hope, I say amen. Amen. Does anyone here have uh, a memory, a short memory of something uh, that they need to say that they would like to say this is an opportunity for that and so I, I invite you to that uh, if you if you wish. I'll leave. Thank you. I guess I don't
my major computer. Um, I didn't really not write any notes down, but um, as far as Bob goes, one of the most interesting guys I've probably ever heard stories about. I didn't get the opportunity to know him really <coughs> too much before his decline, like mentally. Um, a few memories that stand out for me the most would probably be um, I was told that I had to ask him for permission to marry my wife to send it on. And uh, I said, it was an awkward moment to you know, put myself into. I don't remember what we were doing, but he goes, yeah, I, uh, I already told you yes. What are you talking about? And I was like, oh, hopefully that means yes. <laughs> so that was, uh, I'll hold on now forever. And then uh, the next one that stands out most to me that was really important to me is when we walked um, down the aisle at my wedding. That'll always be in my memory forever. For a beautiful day. Uh, some other stories that are a little more funny, uh, a little bit lighter, would probably be um, also at my wedding. But we were coming back to the hotel after the reception. And uh, Travis is here. He remembers that. He might still have, he might still have a bruise from that one. Oh, yeah. Had something to do with his truck keys, and we had to visit him there, but he didn't like to stay in hotels. So Travis says, no, you're not going to leave anywhere. Just give me your keys. And Bob said, I'm not having any of that. And long story short, Travis has ended up on the asphalt. <laughs> <laughs> didn't, you know, I'm not going to beat somebody's grandpa up. So. <laughs> uh, he just kind of took it like a champ, and uh, we moved on from there. <laughs> I guess the other thing that I could say about Bob is that he was always really positive. Every time I came by a scene, whether he was, you know, fully, fully there or somewhere else, he would always ask me about my day, how how my day was going. The weather was ten or fifteen times in the same five minutes, but he was always just positive and always wanted to know how I was doing, how the kids were doing, how you know, how my wife was doing, how everybody was doing. And uh, he never came off negative, ever. I mean, he'd have his times, you know, he told me that, or you know, he might get upset, but most of the time, any time I had an interaction with him, he was always very positive and just wanted to know about your day and how you're doing. So, I know my kids love him very much, and we all miss him, and we all love him. Thank you. Anybody else in the room want to speak or have something to say now? Just make it short and sweet. Bob was a sweet man, very kind man, very giving man. And like you said, he was always positive. Like when you'd see him, you know, he was grateful. He had stubbornness, but he was a wonderful man, always giving. When I, um, he, I don't drink coffee, but he doesn't remember that. So one day he came out, he saw me outside putting my stuff on the table, and he saw me and he poured two cups and came out with two cups of coffee. I'm like, oh my God, you're so sweet, Bob. You know, and he, he'd just do anything for you. He was a really good man. And he was funny, you know, it's hard for me to do this, but he was very funny, and I'm glad I got to know Bob, even though it was in his later years. And uh, I'm glad I got to meet the family. Wonderful family right here. Beautiful family. And um, I hope that they know that Bob really appreciated them, because he really did. Even though, you know, he had to dementia, but he really did. He knew his two girls stood by him and took care of him and his little baby. And he called you his brother. He called me Elvis. <laughs> but he was a really good man. Okay. I want to say uh, that I am a hospice chaplain. So uh, every day of the week, 
I see people with advanced dementia, end stage dementia, and end stage Alzheimer's uh, every single day. Sometimes I see them at home, sometimes I see them where they live. And uh, one of the things that I've noticed is that because it's a d disease that's devastating because of the memory loss, uh, but it does have times and, and you know kind of waves of humor uh, in it too, because they don't remember oftentimes from moment to moment. But there, I will say this, that in my core, I believe that the person with dementia, the person with Alzheimer's, Bob, has given his family, not all days or nights will feel like this, but I believe there's a gift to the family in being able, in their disabilities, to be able to care for him through it all. And that's the kind of gift when it's hands-on care, when it's not always easy that um, that he's given you too, besides all of his love, all of these years in the various ways, besides all the ways that he's been generous and kind and loving, that the gift of being able to care, I mean, you know, when you were little, he held your hand across the street and diapered you, and then, you know, in, in his aging process and his disease, he gave you also the gift of being able to care for him too. And uh, it's kind of a, a severe grace, a severe mercy, uh, because it, it isn't easy, but it is everything that our life should be about, which is love. So if you'd be uh, kind enough to, to join with me in prayer again. God of us all, your love never ends. When everything else seems distant, you still are near. And we pray to you and for one another in our need today and for everyone who mourns with us today. Give to all who sorrow your peace. Come to us and comfort us and help us to trust you, to trust love, to trust love. God of us all, you want only what is good. You give only what is, what is good and what will bless. We come before you with open hearts, acknowledging the gift of God that you gave to us. We ask that you receive him in the arms of your mercy. So it's into your hands that we commend Bob, trusting that your love is forever and for always. We humbly beseech you to make a home for him and pledge ourselves to always have a home for him too in our memories, in our hearts, in our very beings. Receive Bob gently and bring him joyfully among the glorious company of the saints of light. We give him to you from our love to your love. Amen. I uh, dismiss with this blessing. May the peace of God come to you in the daylight, in the dark hours, Peace.